Life in the UK Test. Chapter 3, Section 6, Part 1. Disclaimer. This work is independent and non-official. It is a free help based on life in the United Kingdom, a guide for new residents third edition handbook. December 2015. Chapter 3, Section 6 Part 1. Britain since 1945. The Welfare State. Clement Utley, 1883-1967. William Beveridge, 1879-1963. R.A. Butler, 1902-1982. Dylan Thomas, 1914-1953, The Welfare State. Although the UK had won the war, the country was exhausted economically and the people wanted change. During the war, there had been significant reforms to the educational system and people now looked for wider social reforms. In 1945 the British people elected a Labour government. The new Prime Minister was Clement Attlee, who promised to introduce the welfare state outlined in the Beveridge Report. In 1948, Aniron, Nye, Bevan, the Minister for Health, led the establishment of the National Health Service, which guaranteed a minimum standard of health care for all, three at the point of use. A national system of benefits was also introduced to provide social security, so that the population would be protected from the cradle to the grave. The government took into public ownership nationalized the railways, coal mines and gas, water and electricity supplies. Another aspect of change was self-government for former colonies. In 1947, independence was granted to nine countries, including India, Pakistan, and Ceylon. Now Sri Lanka. Other colonies in Africa, the Caribbean and the Pacific achieved independence over the next 20 years. The UK developed its own atomic bomb and joined the new North Atlantic Treaty Organization NATO, an alliance of nations set up to resist the perceived threat of invasion by the Soviet Union and its allies. Britain had a conservative government from 1951 to 1964. The 1950s were a period of economic recovery after the war, and increasing prosperity for working people. The Prime Minister of the day, Harold Macmillan, was famous for his wind of change speech. About decolonization and independence for the countries of the empire, Clement Attlee, 1883-1967. Clement Attlee was born in London in 1883. His father was a solicitor and, after studying at Oxford University, Attlee became a barrister. He gave this up to do social work in East London and eventually became a Labour MP. He was Winston Churchill's deputy prime minister in the wartime, coalition government and became prime minister after the Labour Party won the 1945 election. He was Prime Minister from 1945 to 1951 and, led the Labour Party for 20 years. Attlee's government undertook the nationalization of major industries, like coal and steel, created the National Health Service and, implemented many of Beveridge's plans for a stronger welfare state. Attlee also introduced measures to improve the conditions of workers. William Beveridge, 1879-1963 William Beveridge, later Lord Beveridge, was a British economist and reformer. He served briefly as a Liberal MP and, was subsequently the leader of the Liberals in the House of Lords, but is best known for the 1942 report Social Insurance and Allied Services, known as the Beveridge Report. The report was commissioned by the wartime government in 1941. It recommended that, the government should find ways of fighting the five giant evils of want, disease, ignorance, squalor, and idleness and provided the basis of the modern welfare state, R. A. Butler, 1902-1982. Richard Austin Butler, later Lord Butler, was born in 1902. He became a Conservative MP in 1923 and held several positions before becoming responsible for education in 1941. In this role, he oversaw the introduction of the Education Act 1944, often called the Butler Act 
which introduced free secondary education in England and Wales. The education system has changed significantly since the Act was introduced, but the division between primary and secondary schools that it enforced still remains in most areas of Britain. Dylan Thomas, 1914-1953 Dylan Thomas was a Welsh poet and writer. He often read and performed his work in public, including for the BBC. His most well-known works include the radio play, Under Milkwood, first performed after his death in 1954, and the poem, Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night, which he wrote for his dying father in 1952. He died at the age of 39 in New York. There are several memorials to him in his birthplace Swansea, including a statue and the Dylan Thomas Center. Study Materials All chapters from the study materials are Crown copyright and have been based on life in the United Kingdom. A Guide for New Residents 3rd Edition Handbook all photos are borrowed from wikipedia.org under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 unported. This work is independent and non-official, prepared in December 2015.